Do you remember what you were doing in exactly 10.42 a.m. a week ago? Or can you recall the name of every person you met in your entire lifespan until now? Or what are the incidents or past experiences that you've had throughout your life? Well, it's natural for us human beings to forget things. Be it your past experiences or the things that you were taught at school or college, our brains are trained to store only specific things which are worth remembering. Before we dive into why we forget things, let's first know what is memory. Memory is our ability to encode, store, retain and subsequently recall information and past experiences in the human brain. Scientists divide memory into categories based on the amount of time a memory lasts. The shortest memories last only for a few milliseconds to a few seconds and are called as immediate memories. And the memories lasting about a minute are called working memories. And the memories lasting anywhere from an hour to many years are called long-term memories. Long-term memories are further classified into explicit or declarative memory and implicit or procedural memory. But where and how are these memories stored? Memories aren't just stored in one part of the brain. Different types are stored across different interconnected brain regions. For explicit memories, which are about events that happen to you, as well as general facts and information, there are three important areas of the brain which are involved. They are the hippocampus, the neocortex, and the amygdala. Implicit memories, on the other hand, which are also known as the motor memories or the procedural memory, relay on the basal ganglia and the cerebellum. And short-term memory or the working memory relies most heavily on the prefrontal cortex. But how are these memories stored? The core component of a nervous system is something called as the brain cell or in other words, in scientific terms, it is also known as the neurons. A neuron is an electrochemical cell which is electrically excitable that processes and transmits information by electrochemical signaling. Unlike other cells, neurons never divide and neither do they die if they are to be replaced by new ones. By the same token, they usually cannot be replaced after being lost, although there are a few exceptions. Every neuron maintains a voltage gradient across its membrane due to metabolically driven differences in ions of sodium, potassium, chlorine and calcium within the cell, each of which has a different charge. If the voltage changes significantly, an electric pulse called an action potential or a nerve impulse is generated. This pulse travels rapidly along the cell's axon and is transferred across a specialized connection known as the synapse to a neighboring neuron, which receives it through a feathery dendrites. A synapse is a complex membrane junction or gap which is used to transmit signals between cells and this transfer is therefore known as a synaptic connection. Each axon terminal contains Thousands of membrane brown sacs or vesicles, which in turn contain thousands of neurotransmitter molecules each. Neurotransmitters are chemical messengers which relay, amplify, and modulate signals between neurons and other cells. The two most common neurotransmitters in the brain are the amino acids, glutamate and GABA. When stimulated by an electrical pulse, neurotransmitters of various types are released and they cross the cell membrane into the synaptic gap between neurons. These chemicals then bind to the chemical receptors in the dendrites of the receiving or the postsynaptic neurons. In the process, they cause changes in the permeability of the cell membrane to specific ions, opening up special gates or channels which settle a flood of charged particles such as ions of calcium, sodium, potassium and chloride. This affects the potential charge of the receiving neuron which then starts up a new electrical signal in the receiving neuron. The whole process takes less than one fifth hundredth of a second. In this way, a message within the brain is converted as it moves from one neuron to the other, from an electrical signal to a chemical signal and back again, in an ongoing chain of events which lead to the basis of all brain activity. It is these neurons which are responsible for encoding, storing and processing of a memory. When you meet a new person in a party, your visual system would have picked up how much of a dynamic personality they had in real life. Well, your auditory system picked up both the sound of his or her voice. Your olfactory component probably even registered how the person smelled. These sensory cues are largely responsible in forming our perceptions. Each of these separate sensations travels to the part of your brain called the hippocampus, which integrates these perceptions as though they were part of a single experience. Although memory starts with perception, it is encoded and stored with the help of neurons. 
Nerve cells are connected with other cells via a point known as a synapse. These synapses transfer the electrical pulses containing information and trigger the release of chemical messengers called neurotransmitters. As a result of this, many axon dendrite connections are also possible along with other variations such as dendrite dendrite, axon axon and axon dendrite connections are also possible. Each individual neuron can form thousands of links with other neurons in this way, giving a typical brain well over a hundred trillion synapses or sometimes up to thousand trillion by some estimates. Functionally related neurons connect to each other to form neural networks. These connections between neurons are not static and they change over time. Neural networks can be considered to be a group of neurons which are responsible to carry out specific activities. The more signals sent between two neurons, the stronger the connection grows and so, with each new experience and each remembered event or fact, the brain slightly rewires its physical structure and as a result, the existing neural networks grow or leads to the formation of new ones. As new memories are formed, new synapses are added, thus increasing the number of connections within the brain. Once memories are encoded, they are transferred to either the long-term or the short-term memory. This is done via by something known as memory consolidation or memory reinforcement. Reinforcement can come in the form of repetition or practice. We remember that 2 plus 2 equals 4 because we have heard it so many times. Reinforcements can also occur through emotional arousal too. Reinforcement or rehearsal is the process of repeated recording of facts, information or other past experiences so as to improve chances of memory not being lost. This helps the brain to restore information in the long run. In analogy, it's like pouring concrete to memories so that they stick together in the brain. The end result is that humans are good at remembering a few complex chunks of information while computers are good at remembering many simple chunks of information. Also because we form memories through consolidation, attention and emotional arousal which work together to determine what features of an event are important and what features will be remembered. From a practical perspective, that means that we can remember something best if we learn it in a context that we understand or if it's emotionally important to us. While most people think that they have either a good or a bad memory, in fact, they are just fairly good at remembering some types of things and not so good at remembering others. So don't feel bad that if you can't remember everything, it's just natural. The failure to remember something can be a result of a faulty encoding of data, assuming that you don't have a physical disease. The information simply fails to make it to the long-term memory.